guys, it's Emily, and welcome back to the Ultima Ship List Part 2. So if you haven't seen my previous video where I ranked the worst ships of all time, in my opinion, you should go check that out. That's an intro. I kind of explain this whole thing. But just a brief introduction before we jump into this. I decided to rank all of the ships, at least most of them. There's some I feel like I couldn't rank in the sense that I could tell you about them and why I liked and didn't like them. So those ships, I have my own separate undetermined list that I'm not sharing so if there's like a show that i mentioned but i don't mention like a specific ship from that show just assume it's on the undetermined list today we are talking about more ships that i don't like so these aren't the worst of the worst these aren't my absolute most hated ships because that was the last video this is the ones i guess that comes after that these are just like slightly better not much but slightly. Today we have 22 ships on this list, so significantly less than the last video. So hopefully I can get through them quicker than I did the last time, because my video is like 45 minutes. I tried to cut down as much as I could, but it is what it is. I've also since added some ships to this list, because since filming the last video, there's either a ship I remembered that I feel like I can't talk about, or I have been getting into other stuff like either reading something new or watching something new that this like above this um that the list has become a bit longer so we are starting a little bit back from where we started before or ended off in the last video so if the numbers feel a little mixed up that is why i don't have my owl cup today i just have a regular cup so it's not as interesting but oh well at number 313, we have Laurel and Skye from Love Letters to the Dead. So this is a book I read for my Goodreads video. So any, also any like videos that I have where I do talk about a certain ship, I will link down below. The plot of Love Letters to the Dead is Laurel is currently grieving her sister who has recently died. And so it's kind of just talking about a grief. And so along her grief journey, she meets a boy named Skye and essentially they start dating. That's... <laughs> The gist there, they don't have like a super interesting storyline. Guy is kind of like mysterious, sort of a bad boy if I'm remembering correctly. I think I had a lot of dislike for the book and the characters as a whole that Laurel and Sky as a ship I just didn't care about. First of all, I think that Laurel was kind of going through a lot, like too much of the time to like actually be in a relationship. I think she kind of needed to cope with stuff. I mean, like have people there for her, but like also like grieve on her own. I think one of that was her relationship with Sky. I think they definitely were toxic to a point. Some things like even on like on both ends of things on the spectrum like it's not like Sky was doing a bunch of bad things to her because he, he was not or Laurel was doing a bunch of bad things to him because she was not but I just don't think their relationship was healthy. I also remember when I was rewatching my vlog I called it cringy so I don't know I found them like a little cringy at times with things they would say or just like I don't know I guess they're like whole meeting and the way they would I guess banter with each other before they started dating I think was just cringy and Laurel was kind of just like a sad girl the whole book for me to like I mean like this this, this book's depressing let me tell you it's just sad um but like wasn't sad enough for me to care I think that if the characters were at a better place in their lives then maybe this relationship would work like I wouldn't be upset if like in the future they met up again and started dating then but i think that like it, it might have been a, the right relationship at the wrong time at number 312 we have aspen and america from the selection series by kira cast you may know this is like my favorite series of all time so you're probably surprised like emily why is emily reading a ship from her favorite series so low on the list because this is not the ship that makes the series honey actually when i first read this series i was an aspen stan i love both aspen and maxin for the longest time but after i think i finished the series and then went back and reread it ever since then aspen just wasn't it because maxin was like top tier boyfriend material for me this plot with aspen in america is they met i think when they were younger they've kind of like I think their family's kind of been like family friends. Her brother Coda was friends with Aspen, so they kind of like would see each other from time to time. And eventually, he she found he kind of she had a, started having a crush on him, and then he ended up like on her birthday saying he liked her back, and they got together and they kind of were in a secret relationship, so their family doesn't know about it because they live in this society um, with these caste systems. So it's kind of like similar to the Hunger Games, like the districts and stuff, except you don't like live in your district caste system. Kind of assign that from birth, like if you 
your families are like this number of cats, like there are five or something, then like you will be a five too, unless you are a female that marries up. So like if you're a girl and your like husband is like a four, then like you then become a four along with that. Aspen is a six and America is a five. So essentially if she married down, she would become a six. And so her family doesn't want that for her because sixes are worse off than fives are. And so they kind of keep their relationship a secret. The selection comes around. America doesn't want to enter the selection, obviously, because she has this boyfriend, Aspen. But then she, he, like, convinces her to enter the selection. And she, she gets chosen, if she couldn't tell by the title. <laughs> I remember reading this book, because this is, like, the first, like, YA book I ever read. And I was, like, so shook that she got chosen for the selection. And I was like, oh, no. I want her to be with Aspen. Oh, no. <laughs> From the first time I read it, let me tell you, I loved Aspen because this is like the first YA book I ever read so like I didn't know I mean like most of the time I liked a lot of relationships like I was in I was like 12 when I read this I don't have like the specific like standards on what I like in a relationship in a book um anymore <laughs> or I didn't have that back then like if, if the main character had a boyfriend that was cool with me now if I read a book and the main character has a boyfriend I usually unfortunately don't like you boyfriend <laughs> um, I always get bad because I, I, usually I know that they're gonna end up with somebody else so I feel like I don't ever care about the boyfriend enough or girlfriend but here I did actually care about Aspen for a while um and I was like oh they're cute I want her to be with Aspen and then Aspen just got worse and worse as a character Aspen was like the most selfish character in this entire no is America more selfish I realized I didn't turn on my other light. I should have done that. I'm gonna do that. He lets her go and breaks up with her so she can be in the selection. I feel like I might get into mild spoilers here, so if you don't be like spoiled for this series at all, then I will put a timestamp. Because I feel like it's hard to talk about Aspen and America and why I don't like them without spoiling it. <laughs> Essentially, Aspen comes back. There's like this, uh, I don't wanna call it deployment thing. It's, it's not, that's not what it's called, the. It's basically where, like, they recruit people to come part of the army. So Aspen ends up getting chosen, and he ends up at the palace where America is. And America's kind of, like, moved on with Max in a little bit. And Aspen comes back, and he gets, like, all jealous. And he, it seems like he forgets that he's the one that told her to enter the selection. He's the one that broke up with her, and she was, like, willing to be with him. <laughs> and then keeps, like coming after her and basically I think guilting her slightly to be with him at times. Max does like one thing wrong and it wasn't really that wrong, it wasn't even his fault. America also will just like go like running into the arms of Aspen. I'm not saying America's perfect because she's far from it. <laughs> she also does like a bunch of dumb stuff in this book. He's just like extremely selfish and it just constantly bothered me how much he just like kept going after America. Even like when she said like I'm moving on, like I'm done with this and then like he kept like guilting her being like I'm the one for you and blah 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 blah. At number 311 we have Ty and Bay from Switched at Birth. Now this is a ship I don't really remember as much about because it's been a little bit since I've watched Switched at Birth but essentially uh Bay finds out that she's been Switched at Birth and so there's it's like when she's meeting Daphne she ends up meeting uh one of their family friends which is Ty and he is cute and stuff like that and they kind of like get to know each other like a little bit and then like they kind of start going out pretty quickly the thing is i don't i didn't hate them at first but they, they were just kind of like too insta love like i was kind of like they got together like really quickly they kind of have like a period of time where they're like not together for a while and then like ty comes back into the show i think it's more the fact that i ship bay more with emmett not to spoil more of where this video is gonna go but i definitely ship bay more with emmett um i kind of said the same thing about travis too it's just like, I don't know, I just don't care about that ship as much. I feel like Bay and Emma just generally have more chemistry together than Bay and Ty did. At number 3 and 10, we have Michelle and Sean from Endless Summer. So this, we have our first uh, choice of side ship on the list. <laughs> to be honest, they are a good ship, okay? I, I will say, if, if your love interest in Endless Summer is not Sean, then by all means, Sean and Michelle should get together. The plot here is basically in university, Sean and Michelle met and they started dating each other. I don't really know what, how they met actually. They just they just were dating each other and that's all I really knew. Her roommates are like really mean and so they told Sean that Michelle had cheated on him. And so since he just like believes them, he ends up breaking up with her and Michelle kind of lets him just believe this, but she's kind of like also trying to flirt with him and get him back too. It's kind of like a second chance romance sort of plot, but the thing is, I think I just, it's just that 
I ship Sean more with the main character in this book more than I do Michelle. So while they are a good ship as a whole, I, if, from my standpoint, just seeing like another girl keep, I mean she doesn't really, like she's never just tries, like, and, like once like Sean and the main character are together, she doesn't try to steal um, him away or anything like that, but I just ship Sean more with somebody else, so like that's the main reason. And I don't know, I think it, this happens like a lot too, where my love interest ends up also having another love interest in the story. I also think they have like kind of some more like trust issues that they'd have to work through. I don't really know what it happens like if Sean and Michelle do get together in your game, but they definitely have like some trust issues to work out because like, for one, like he believed the roommates right away that she cheated. And then, like, also, like, him believing that she cheated for so long and, like, having, like, trust issues with other relationships has, like, affected him. And so I feel like going back to that and, like, trying to trust her again would be hard, whether or not, like, she did cheat because, like, he thought she did for so long. Again, I love them separately as characters, but Sean is my love interest in the book, so I kind of have a bias. At number three out of nine, we have Quentin and Margot from Paper Towns. Now, I don't really remember them much as a ship. I read Paper Towns last year, also for the Goodreads vlogs. Was I supposed to care about this? I don't really know. I don't think the relationship in this book is, like, the main point, but was I supposed to care? I think, again, it's another one of those situations where I think I'm more mad about the book itself. There's nothing, like, necessarily completely wrong I can point out about them as a ship, but I don't know. I think when I heard about this, I was expecting more of a romance because I had read Fault in Our Stars, which like was a romance. And so when Paper Towns like was becoming a movie and like they were gonna, like Margot and Quentin were like the main characters or the main ship in it, I thought they'd have like a really good relationship, kind of romance thing, but that's not what this is. At number 308, we have Lizzie and Darcy from Prom and Prejudice, not Pride and Prejudice. I haven't read the original Pride and Prejudice yet, I want to. It's on my bucket list of book or TBR books, like old books I want to read. I don't really want to read many classics, but Pride and Prejudice is one of them. This was probably like the worst version of Pride and Prejudice. Um, I think the characters were interesting enough that to make me want to read Pride and Prejudice, but this ship itself was not great. I'm trying to remember like what they were about essentially, but I don't remember much. I think they just come like from two different like class systems. It wasn't written well here, which was disappointing because I really liked Elizabeth Fieldworth's books in the past, but this one I didn't like. I just felt like, I don't know, them as a ship was just so the the But I know I read this last summer, but I don't remember it that well or anything about their relationship. That they're just kind of forgettable. And I still wasn't gonna put forgettable ships on this list. But at the same time, I feel like if I read it within the past year, they should be on the list because I should remember it that somewhat clearly. Pride and Prejudice is probably just like a lot better, but I just haven't read it, it yet, so yeah, I don't know. These, these just don't live up to that. I already know that when I read Pride and Prejudice, I'm going to like them better than this. At number 307, we have Ashlyn and Finn from Everblue. So basically, Ashlyn has this best friend who I can't remember her name. She's a brother named Finn, and Finn and the friend are mermaids. So that's fun. I love mermaids. Ashlyn's kind of like always had a crush on Finn, and Finn's always had a crush on her. So from the beginning of the book, like they already like each other, and I'm the kind of person that I like my relationships to be a bit more well-developed in a sense where I like to see them fall for each other and see them start liking each other in the first place. The only like development we really have with their relationship in the first book, which is the only book in the series that I have read, is just saying that they like each other at the beginning of the book and then them getting together at the end of the book. The whole book they're literally like separated the whole time so there's not even like much moments you see them together they're just like thinking about each other the whole time and i have like other opinions on the book as a whole that i'm not going to get into because i feel like it's not necessarily applicable to the ship but it's just i don't know there wasn't enough of the screen time of them together for me to care about their relationship it was just more about the other stuff going on but like they'd think about each other so then like when they got together at the end of the book it was just like unsatisfying from the reader side of things, it's kind of insta lobby because like we never saw the development of them like, you know, starting to like each other or like seeing them together and hanging out. There just was like two scenes that I actually remember of them together. But other than that, that's not enough for me to care about them. So from the reader side of things is insta lobby because there wasn't development. But from their side of things, like they've like known each other for a long time, so I don't know. <sighs> 
At number 306, we have Lila and Beckett from Heat of the Moment. So this series, I did a whole, or the Moment of Truth series, I did a whole 24-hour reading vlog for, so Lila and the Beckett are from the first book, which was my least favorite, if you couldn't tell. Essentially, Lila has this boyfriend, and his name is Derek. She's planning to sleep with him, and on this, like, trip that they're going on, this school trip, and then she misses the bus for the trip, and there's this other boy named Beckett who's there, who, like, also missed the bus. They end up getting a ride to the airport together, and then, like, she kind of starts noticing Beckett after this, and he's kind of... I think he's somewhat of a bad boy, or supposed to be. They end up hanging out a bit more on this trip when Derek's supposedly not paying enough attention to her, and things escalate. First of all, I want to say don't go after someone you know is in a relationship, because it's exactly what Beckett did. Like, they have been, like, talking for, like, all of, like, a day or two, and he's constantly flirting with her, even though she, he's well aware she's in a relationship. I also hated the main character more than the love interest in this situation. The love interest I didn't like that much either, but the main character was like the most annoying protagonist I've ever had the displeasure of reading from. And <laughs> she was so selfish that like she literally cared about nobody else's feelings other than her own. And cheating in general is a no for me. Like I said, I'm, I'm probably going to take all this back when I talk about other ships on this list that are higher that do involve cheating but this one I was just like it felt more intentional you know it wasn't like I kissed somebody at a party one time I'm sorry this was very intentional cheating and he kept going after her even when she knew he knew that she was in a relationship at number three and five, we have Sam and Denver from The Fascinator. So The Fascinator is like this magical people book. We follow these teenagers and they're kind of having this like magic club. And one of the characters, the main one we follow, is named Sam. And there is this new guy named Denver who ends up joining the club. And you can probably see where this is going. What mainly irked me was the fact that I was... I was thinking the wrong ship was happening the entire book. That when I realized I was rooting for the wrong thing, I got very angry about it. I read The Fascinators in my friends to lovers vlog. I didn't realize what the endgame ship was and then I found out what it was and I wasn't impressed. Um, along with that, I think that Sam and Denver don't really work as like a relationship. I strongly prefer them as a friendship. I think that just worked better personally. I didn't like them as a ship. I, I didn't. I thought they were more platonic with each other. So when stuff started happening with them, I was like, why? At number three and four, we have Shay and Nia from Catching Feelings. So this is a friends to lovers story on episodes. So we have Shay and Nia and they've been like friends since childhood. They've been together through everything and you know it's high school and things are starting to change between them would they catch feelings I don't, I don't think they will based on the title called catching feelings i think they're not going to catch feelings this may be like one of the most unrealistic no it's not the most i forgot Ava and lucas from the last video characters would like shower together but definitely pretty unrealistic friends to lovers i feel like you kind of have to remember that a relationship with friends is different based on like like if when you have like two when you're like a girl and you have a girl best friend that's very different than when you have a male best friend like my my parents just had rules different rules just growing up um like with my female friends compared to my male friends like it, it just was different they had weird things there was like I guess Shay in the beginning, this is like not really a spoiler because it literally is real in like the first episode, but his parents are like going through a divorce and there's kind of like hard stuff going on so like his parents would be arguing and they're like next door neighbors so they would, he'd like come over to her house and sleep over, which I mean like could happen, but like they, they slept in the same bed, which would not happen. My parents, I know, would never let that happen. So I just like, unrealistic in that sense, I feel like they would talk about things they've done together, and I'm like, friends, don't do that. <laughs> Along with that, it's also revealed in the first chapter that Shay has been hooking up with Nia's bully. <laughs> like, this girl, like, tormented Nia in middle school, and 
Shay would know this because he's her best friend. He would know like all like the pain that like sh this girl like put Nia through. But instead, he like went to driver's ed with her. He kind of like started like hooking up essentially after driver's ed and you I feel like Shay is not even like a good friend in general. Like if he would stoop so low to just like hook up with this girl that like has done awful things to Nia. Like that's just disrespectful to her and makes me angry. And it's not like she's even changed either. Like she's still like bullying it and tormenting her. So I just kind of like lost all respect for Shay after that because why dude? Why? If you were really ever friends with Nia in the first place you wouldn't hook up with the girl who has put her through a bunch of pain. You have no respect for Nia as a person if you're gonna do something like this to her and I don't know I feel like it wasn't addressed in the best way in the story either. At number three and three we have Kay, Sarah Numa, and Nina Shida from Kiss Him Not Me. I didn't really explain what Kiss Him Not Me was about in the first one but essentially we follow this girl named Kay and she essentially is plus sized at the beginning of the story and she is a fangirl and of, she, she, she ships boys together. Once like her favorite character like her favorite anime dies she spends a week crying in her room and essentially loses a bunch of weight which causes a bunch of the boys at the school to notice her which like is extremely problematic and blah but <laughs> we meet Nina Shida later on in the story so she uh shows up later and so she didn't ever know her I guess before she's like an author she meets her at like this convention and she is an author or draw she she does i think she makes mangas she draws mangas but i think she's like also a teen or is she a cosplayer i think she's she's all of the above she's a, she's an author she's a cosplayer and she's also a teenager <laughs> in high school you know, i felt meh about them like i said she's she's not the worst out of all of them like there have been worse and i've already discussed the worst but she's still not great either i don't know i just found her fine maybe a little bit forced too like they had like stuff in common you know with like the manga and stuff but then they'd get in like arguments and it was like over like the stupidest little things it's not like it's like a playful bantery argument like they would take the argument so seriously she was also Kay's first kiss that might spoil some things but yeah i don't know I, I, I don't know whether she really wanted that to happen and it's not really ever addressed yeah i said wow i don't even I don't even need to look at my notes, I just know what to say. Wow. At number three and two, we have Archie and Veronica from Riverdale. Or the Archie comics. Your two choice. I'm specifically more talking about the Riverdale. I feel like most people know who Archie and Veronica are, who Archie is. But if you don't know, I shall explain. Uh, basically, Archie is lives, lives in Riverdale. And he he's at Pop's Diner with his, his best pal, Betty. And Veronica walks in, looking beautiful as ever and he kind of like falls for her in that moment but then like Veronica knows like that Betty likes him so she's like not gonna act on it but then there's like this like kissing game like seven minutes I think they played seven minutes in heaven I'm pretty sure and she ends up kissing him in the closet so I mean like not like she really less long you know staying away from Archie I don't know I just like mm, like, they're insta-lovey, so, like, they get together pretty, like, in the first episode, they're kissing. I was also more of a Barchi fan in the comics and in the show, so, I don't know, I just never shipped Veronica with Archie, and I just never, I never cared about it, they, and then they, like, again, I feel like in Riverdale, like, everyone breaks up for the dumbest reason, or, I don't know, it was, like, way too dramatic that, like, it's unbelievable that this would even happen, and they're also just, like, the cringiest ship ever. Like when she calls him Archie Kin. Gag. <laughs> Their whole relationship, the way they talk with each other. I mean, the whole show is cringy. I can't take any of it seriously. I think at one point they were my favorite ship in the show. But I still didn't like them at all. But that's just not my point of what was happening in the show. And number three and one, we have Lila and Derek from The Heat at the Moment. So I've kind of briefly talked about them before. So Derek was the boyfriend and I just hated Lila and <laughs> how she treated him. And I felt like the story very much villainized Derek. That was frustrating because I thought he was actually a pretty good boyfriend. Lila was the one being selfish. I mean, she's the one that like cheated, but like they try to like 
not not justify the cheating with more cheating but like there's another girl that like he i guess like has been talking to so they try to be like justifying it in that way this is why i don't usually like the boyfriend characters because like i said the main character always ends up with somebody else they like rarely if ever end up with the boyfriend at the beginning of the book if there's a boyfriend at the beginning of the story they're not working out <laughs> so there's no point in me caring about it so this one I was surprising though because i thought i would definitely like beck more but i don't know lila just treated Derek so horribly but she also i just didn't like her with beckett either so <laughs> here we are at number 300 we have evangeline and logan from more than meets the eye so this is the first book so i talked about the sequel in the last video with zach and abigail and this is the first book i didn't like it that much better <laughs> evangeline she was born with two different color eyes hence why it is called more than meets the eye she's not really been doing good on the boys department and she meets logan and he's nice or so she thinks but logan has ulterior motives and he is kind of getting close to evangeline to essentially use her because he wants to get revenge against her brother zach and he wants to uh there was like this thing that happened years ago i remember what it was but i, I don't know i feel like it might be spoilery but this thing that happened years ago so he's kind of like mad at zach about it so he's kind of like come to take his revenge out on zach i just didn't like the way that logan was using evangeline the whole time and then like they justified it being like oh but he loves her <laughs> kind of playing with her feelings so he didn't really know whether or not what he was feeling was real and then like he was kind of just so blinded by revenge for a majority of the book that like even if his feelings was real for evangeline like he started out using her and just mm, didn't sit well with me and then evangeline was so I don't remember her being that mad about it. <laughs> and while, yes, his motives may have changed in the end of the book, I still don't like that he used her. I get that's the plot, but I still don't like it. We have the left, the two the 300s. We are, we are gone from that. But 299, we have Emily and Gabriel from Emily in Paris. I watched this show recent-ish a little bit ago with my friend. I never really liked the show. This was just such a staple boring ship that it, like, i've seen it i've read about it before i've seen it before there's nothing new to the table it's just like bland boring where's the flavor there is none my top note is force 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 yeah, emily like moves to paris if you haven't seen the show emily moves to paris and she is kind of in this like crummy apartment building and so gabriel like also lives in this apartment building and he's like a french boy so the only really nice French boy, deba debatably nice French boy in this show. <laughs> I feel like, like, I knew where the story was gonna go, like, as soon as we met Gabriel, and, like, I don't know, there was nothing to root for. You should want them together, but, like, it's just, like, it's nothing new. It's just all, like, I've read this before. It's, like, the, the less flavorful version of Anna and the French Kiss. That's what this was. Maybe that's what this, what this was supposed to be. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's very similar to Anna and Etienne, but just like less interesting, more boring. You know, they 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 meet in Paris. <laughs> For one, there's there's a French boy named Gabriel Etienne Saint Clair, and you know they 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 start hanging out together, but but they have a girlfriend. And so, I don't know why I'm saying it in this accent. I don't know what this accent is. So they can't be together because of the girlfriend that they chose to have. And so they have to stay away from each other. The irony is I rate Anna and NTN like way higher because they're just like significantly better. <laughs> Maybe partly because of nostalgia purposes, but they're just significantly better. So like I said, I can give you a very real comparison of where have I seen this ship before and why it wasn't as good. He's hot. I get it. But no don't do it and cheating is also a hard no she says as she praises Anne in the french kiss but we know i think i've seen this film before at number 298 we have james and cara from supergirl another fourth ship <laughs> essentially james and cara really only last like one season because i don't think anybody likes them <laughs> together and so they're like okay well if we don't even have a fandom shipping them together then I guess we can't continue with this, but essentially there's kind of like a love triangle in season one with like James and Kara and Wynn. James is like James Olsen from the comics, Superman's best friend, and she's Supergirl. And so like he starts working at like Catco with her 
and she kind of has to start having like a crush on him and I think he likes her too but just like I, I, I constantly forget that they were a ship that happened <laughs> because the writers just like ditched that season two we're just like no that was a bad idea it didn't work at all because it, it was just forced and they didn't have the chemistry and you're told you're supposed to like them but you actuality I don't think anyone actually did you can't just convince me being like yes you must like them there needs to be a reason why I should like them and there wasn't I like both the characters I mean James like is a little bit boring but I mean I don't I don't hate him but car Kara is great but they're just like a mass ship. At number 297, we have Natalie and Alex from It Sounded Better In My Head. This book I read in a day when I was trying to work on schoolwork. Basically, we follow this girl named Natalie and she has like this acne problem and so she hasn't felt loved before and her crush, who is also her best friend, is dating her other best friend. And so she ends up uh, dating uh, her, her crush's brother instead. Because if you can't have your crush, well, your his brother is as close as you're gonna get, I guess. <laughs> like they didn't really have that much scenes together, and I guess like it's more of like a coming of age and like accepting yourself sort of story. But even then, it wasn't entirely because we didn't even get to like her accepting herself in the story. <laughs> like there's nothing really that special about them that makes me feel like ah, they could just no. And to be honest, I was I was more invested in the side ship. Like if this book was about these friends falling in love. And then, like, they had, like, a sequel that was, like, about them, like, in this book, essentially. And, like, them dealing with their relationship and learning things. Like, I was so invested in the side relationship in this book. Like, I, they were already together. They were, like, friends to lovers. Which is my, my cup of tea. They were just really cute, actually. So, I, I, I don't usually care about the side ship more than the main ship. But this is one of those rare instances. This is what I did. I wanted to know what was happening with them. But yeah, Natalie and Alex, though, just, just didn't have that same chemistry that uh, the side characters did. And I don't remember their names, but I have Natalie and Alex, like, literally written here, so that's the only reason I know their names. <laughs> At number 296, we have Keaton and Luke from Top Secret, so these characters, uh, they are in the same frat house, and they are essentially trying to become, like, the, the like, top frat guy, or what? I, I don't know what it is, but there's, like, some competition, like, to be, like, the leader of the frat house, I think, so it's between, like, them, so they don't like each other, but they are, like, secretly communicating to each other, like, on a dating app, and they don't know, like, they're talking to each other. My first response, <laughs> my first top note is, what relationship? The thing is, it's kind of my same critique with what I had to say about Witness, is it's straight up less the whole time. It's, nothing but that like their whole conversations on the dating app are about sex the whole time so there wasn't like an emotional thing to me like like i don't know there wasn't that emotional portion for me to care about them or want them together like it just th the emotion wasn't there it's just the the sexual talk and i i need more than that i don't care about that like if there's a bunch of sexual talk in a book i usually don't care about that part like at all so when there's just that, there need, I mean, it, I think in general there needs to be emotion too. Like I don't think you can just write a book. Like I think you can write a book that has like a lot of more of emotion to it rather than like maybe like a small bit, you know, of like sexual content. But like if it's looking like this with the sexual content and there's like no emotional content, then then where, why should I want these characters together? It sucks because like in theory this like book sounded really interesting to me, but execution wise, it was just, just the sex stuff. At number 295, we have Marguerite and Paul from A Thousand Pieces of You. So essentially, Marguerite is this girl and she's like a scientist's daughter. And so Paul is somebody that works for her parents. But then her dad gets murdered. And so she, they have like this, her parents are like working on like this firebird, which like allows you to travel into different dimensions. So when her dad gets murdered, uh, Paul, like, takes this firebird, um, because he's, like, the prime suspect, and he travels into, like, another dimension, and so Marguerite goes after him to, essentially, I think she's trying to kill him, because he killed her dad, um, and get revenge. So, like, in, like, we have, like, other dimensions or whatever, like, and, like, so there's different, like, versions of people in these other dimensions, and what happened with me is I shipped Marguerite more with, like, other versions like dimensional versions of Paul 
rather than like Paul from her dimension himself. When it came to like them getting together, like I didn't care about it because I cared more about her with like a different version of Paul, if that makes any sense. And it's not that I just, not that I hated Paul because I didn't, but you know when like you have like a friend and like they get like a new boyfriend or girlfriend and like that's like all they can talk about is like them dating this person and nothing else that's kind of how i felt about marguerite and paul because i just got so annoyed with like marguerite talking about him all the time and i did not care <laughs> for it i was just like shut up about paul at number 294 we have callie and jack from mismatch so their story is callie works as like a bartender at her dad's restaurant and jack or jock i chose male jack so it's jack and they meet while she's bartending kind of flirt and end up hooking up and it went well so they end up having a date the next night where he takes her to this work business party and jack's like up for this like big promotion too so like he's also excited to show like the girl he likes that he's being promoted and he's a great guy the boss uh ends up hiring callie and also announces that she is stepping down and has started this like matchmaking he works for a matchmaking company i forgot to mention that but she ends up making this like competition out of like her current employees uh to become like the next like boss of like this matchmaking company so now instead of jack getting this promotion he has to fight for it against some girl that was like literally just hired this is a whirlwind romance so they get together pretty quickly which isn't my cup of tea for the most part i tend to like more slow burn relationships this also didn't know what it wanted to be because it was like a whirlwind romance but it was also a forbidden romance but it was also a hate to love romance and i think it wanted to be too many different things that it just did not make sense overall it's more of a critique on the book as a whole but it didn't really make sense to me that this random woman would give up her matchmaking business to someone she just met not someone who's been like working for the company for years no she just met this person and she's willing to hand over the business just like that i don't believe it but yeah i, I did, found this like book kind of boring as a whole and i kind of just like dragged through it and since i didn't care about the relationship whatsoever that didn't make this book any better. At number 293, we have Tyler and Abby from the Freshman series. This is another side ship. They aren't the main ship, they are the side ship. But I had so many opinions on them that they are here. So Tyler and Abby is like a ship you kind of have to spend diamonds on, but then like honestly the diamonds don't really matter. So like don't spend diamonds on them. Like, Abby's like an artist and then like Tyler, I guess is like kind of nerdy and they tyler kind of has like a crush on abby right away and abby kind of likes him back pretty quickly but it kind of takes them a little bit to actually get together first of all i wanted tyler to be a love interest i'm very unpopular in that but when i first played this book i really wanted to date tyler this whole time and the book wouldn't let me sure enough he's not a love interest for me he's a love interest for abby and like they were cute at first i was like cool sure whatever the issue began in the sophomore series and they just had so many problems and i didn't care to deal with them the sophomore was essentially about tyler and abby's relationship problems and i'm like this isn't even about my own relationship this is about somebody else's relationship and like they just kind of like or kept arguing like all the time and it just got so annoying to just like having to deal with both of them the point the main character just got mad that, like abby ate her cake it was just uh, uh, they were a headache to deal with and i don't like them <laughs> the sophomore just convinced me that i don't ship them at all and we are at the last ship on the list and that is jughead and betty from riverdale jughead and betty bughead this is a popular one but i have an unpopular opinion but essentially jughead is archie's best friend and then betty is like veronica's best friend but and i think they kind of knew each other something before and then like when there's like the mystery of who killed Jason Blossom they like kind of like are doing to solve the mystery and like he also has a lot of stuff going on and Jughead's like mysterious I don't even really need to explain Bughead to you you know who Bughead is but like in case you didn't now you know I actually used to be such a trash Bughead shipper but I also used to be Riverdale trash and that has immensely changed only I was really on trash for season one like season one I really loved 
and enjoyed. But anything after that was a mess. A hot mess. And just some stuff just started getting weird for them as a whole. And I feel like this happens with like a lot of the Riverdale ships where they constantly like are breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and getting back together. And that happened with them and they would like break up for like these weird reasons and like I mean like the whole plot of Riverdale it was is weird and a lot of the stuff that happens in the show is not realistic and it's a lot very weird for the most part so them breaking up for the weird reasons is probably not the most surprising part of the show like i used to love both these characters they were my favorite characters in the show i loved them a lot and then eventually i got so annoyed with betty all the time i got so annoyed with jughead and that i didn't like if i'm annoyed with both the characters as a whole and i don't like them then i'm not gonna want them together at all or with anyone I'm not gonna care about their relationships if I just don't care about them as people so that is that yeah, I, I spilled the tea on some of my unpopular opinions but thank you guys so much for watching this video if you did like it be sure to give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of this little face and I will talk to y'all soon in a new video goodbye <laughs>